Welcome to the anime recap. Uh, we dropped a name uh, because it was ridiculously hard to remember and type correctly after two hours of editing. Copying <laughs> and pasting is hard. <laughs> you would be surprised how many times I screwed up on the last RT video. <laughs> yeah. You, you just flipped those numbers, man. <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, it's a long story. <laughs> So uh, today the shows we're going to cover because we missed last week. Uh, Kiz Navier episodes three and four. Uh, My Hero Academia episodes three and four. And uh, let's see. I'm sorry. Phoenix uh, Wright, damn it. Ace Attorney episodes one through four. The Mark. Aww. <laughs> So uh, we are going to start with Kiznavier. Uh I couldn't find summaries of this on Wikipedia, so bear with me. I watched these uh, the other day. Uh, our children have just come to terms with each other, revealing their deepest, darkest secrets of being fat, afraid of dogs, not believing in fairies, and loving a piece of cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> and you're, talking then, about that one, you're talking about that one girl like in the not Simone character, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and then Glasses Girl comes in and says she killed somebody. Ha ha, just kidding. She didn't really kill somebody. And so now they're all Kiznaviers. Or all together are, are the Kiznavier. That's not made clear. Uh, that was episode three, basically. Oh. Okay. Uh, that they were in the hospital and they each have to reveal a secret. It's really long, and the secrets are all really dumb. Well, yeah, I saw episode two. Yeah, they're, well, they're still in the hospital in three. Freaking basically YouTube get... <laughs> Episode four starts off uh, with uh, Pompadour guy uh, in Cardboard's house. I don't know their names, and I'm not going to remember their names. I'm not trying to be a jerk here. I just don't like any of these characters. Is Pompadour not uh, not common enough? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think his name's Tenji or something. You're right. Let me just Tenga. pull up the Wikipedia. Yeah, let me look, pull up the Wikipedia. I feel bad. At... I'm so, good with my is... current log on comparison. I'm pretty good here. It's pretty accurate. He is common enough. If Kamini was afraid of dogs for some reason. Come on. Uh, anyway. They are in his apart uh, cardboard Superman. I'm calling cardboard just because that's what it is. Uh, but I'll call the rest cardboard of them by their names. Cardboard is Katsuhira. <laughs> it works. Yeah, but before he died, he got to see her panties, so it worked out. <laughs> oh, but there's more. Okay, so. Oh my god, I'm watching Katsuhira right now too. and uh, Tenga are in Katsuhira's apartment. Uh, he lives with him now, apparently, because they can share each other's pain. But whatever. Uh, and they find uh, uh Tanga finds out uh they live next door to uh Cheatery, the girl who likes uh Kazuhira. <laughs> and so he decides, brilliantly, to jump the balcony. He uh he makes it, which is everyone's relieved, and then he slips and falls and sprains his wrist. Uh they find out that uh only the initial pain is what they feel, and lingering pain doesn't transfer. Kinda misses the point <laughs> of the system, I think. And um, they go to school. It's typical, don't tell anybody that we were kidnapped and forced to feel each other's pain, because, you know, maybe the police should know about this. <laughs> uh, they've, all hidden, yeah, they've all hidden their obvious scars in different ways, band-aids. Uh, one of them has makeup. Um, it, it's just pretty dumb. And then uh, they keep feeling pain none of them can account for. And it turns out there's another Kiznade here. And uh? he is a homeless person or something. <laughs> like, I don't know. They had to find him. That was their next mission. And they find out there's a time limit on the project. As long as they can make it through the summer with each other. The project will be disbanded and they won't feel each other's pain anymore. Or that's what they believe. She never said that. <laughs> she just said it would be, uh, they'd be allowed to go their separate ways. 
after summer is most likely where the series takes its second half approach. Just like all the triggers. Oh yeah, I know there's gonna be a second half twist. We know that. Do you know the guy they're supposed to find doesn't seem to be on the lucky for some reason. Unless he's the Yoshiharu. Master. Oh, is it Yoshiharu? Okay, that makes sense. He's a, a matrist. A masochist. Um and uh oh lord. I uh I couldn't get through this episode, I'll be honest. I'm sorry everyone. I just hated it. It was so boring. I didn't care. Like, I'm gonna try harder in the future because I owe it to the view, to the listeners and the viewers, to try to be impartial and critique the show. But I just don't like it. I I don't know. Oh. The characters are so bad, so so bad. If you didn't get that from my names for something. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, Steve, what did you think of this episode? I mean, they're, they're at least getting more into what how this whole thing works. But I mean, yeah, it's just, I don't know. I, I think they, that you're not really supposed to necessarily like the characters, but I think that's kind of a bad way to go about a show. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's certainly not on the top of my list, but I still feel like it, has potential to get better later on. Yeah. Like, that's the problem, though. Trigger, their shows usually start really strong and stay strong. I appreciate them trying something different here, but I don't think it's working. I'm, Mark, you've I'm, seen two episodes, right? Yeah, just the first two, so. How do you feel about it? I mean, I'm interested to see where they're going with this, but I know at this point I was a lot more interested with uh, Gurren Logon and Kill the Kill. Yeah. They, they got me from Go with those shows. Gurren Logon started with a really neat premise because you thought Kamino was the hero. Right. And, which is weird because you don't start with him as the POV character. And right. then you realize it's Simon and right. fairly quickly, too. Mm -hmm. um, and it's him overcoming... The shadow of uh, Kamen Rider being his own man and all that. And then right, Kill right. a Kill just starts at 11. Oh, of course, yeah. But this, I don't know. And I mean, I like Simone and I like Kamen uh, I forget. I feel bad because I I forget all the names from Kill a Kill because. Uh, Ryoko. I haven't re yeah, Ryoko. And it's not it's not that I don't like it. I haven't watched it like 700 times like I have with Gurren Lagann. <laughs> Ryuko, Satsuki, yeah. um, uh, Akko. Like, even the bad guys in Kill a Kill were interesting, and they had good motivations for the most part. Yeah. For the most also, part. Also, one of the guys on Trigger really likes masochists, because this is like the third one in their show. It's kind of weird. Which one's the masochist in this show? Uh... You haven't met him yet. He'll be in the uh, fourth episode. Oh, it's the homeless guy. Yeah, the one in oh. yeah the one covered in band aids and rags. Well, he's not really homeless, but yeah, <laughs> he looks homeless, right? Mm, okay. Um, because they went up, they showed up at his apartment and were trying to see if he was there, and then he ran away. Is he a hickamore? I mean, yeah, I mean, he has. They said he hadn't been coming to school or the entire year or whatever, or maybe never. I don't know. I, I guess he was close to failing or something. But yeah, I mean, he was just staying at home the whole time. Hmm. Well, those characters, oh god, he's gonna get a doll in the mail and do the Rosie Maidens. No one knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Rosie Maidens is an anime. <laughs> no. Um. Uh, hmm. Was it? <laughs> Unfortunately. Mm. I don't know how I figured that. Huh. Okay, Wait. so um, uh, my dog just somehow walked in to a barricaded door. Okay, so uh, let's move on. Uh, next up, My Hero Academia, episode 3 and 4. Um, before we start, I read ahead because I wasn't going to. And... Then I really like these episodes that much. I binged the manga yesterday. 
uh, which is at 88 chapters, so that took uh, quite a fair, fair bit of time. Uh, I think I know where this anime is going to leave off. And unless they food wars it and do it in the middle of a tournament, I think they'll be fine. <laughs> so, uh, I'm excited to see this. Uh, some of the fights that they're probably going to show are going to be really neat. So, episode three, uh, we start the hero test. Uh, we get a little introduction to one of the teachers, uh, some of the main characters. Sorry. Let's start over. Episode three and four. Um, like I said, episode three starts off, uh, we get a little introduction to the school. Um, and then the uh, actual test starts. Um, Taku doesn't do really well, but uh, he uses his powers when it counts and saves. Uh, I know her hero name, but not her regular name. Uh, her name's Uravity uh, from uh, the Zero Point Machine. But in doing so, he breaks both of his legs and his arm because his body isn't used to All Might's power. <laughs> he doesn't get any points on the test. Uh, that's where the episode ends. Uh, episode 4 picks up from there. Uh, he's healed by uh, Recovery Girl, who is uh, one of the funnier characters. <laughs> this little old lady who heals you by kissing you <laughs> on the head. And then he's not sure he passed. And then we find out that uh, the hero school has uh, saving points for people who act very heroic during the test. And uh, by saving that girl, and then that girl trying to give him some of her points, they both passed. So, um, I really like both of these episodes. Like, enough that, like I said, I binged the whole manga. Uh, I just, I really like how earnest this is, and it's trying to mimic Western comic books. Or adding a Japanese flair to it. I don't know. Um, also, I love Deku's mom. She's like, I'm so sick of anime parents that don't like support their children. It's nice to have one that does. Uh, what do you guys, uh, Steve? What do you think? I mean, yeah, the the third episode especially was, I mean, just the whole ending part there was was the, obviously the yeah. best part. I mean. I, I just, I think that, I mean, I, I definitely see what, why you would want to binge read it. I just really, it's hard for me to want to do that since I have so much other stuff yeah. to watch every season that I, it's best for me to just leave it go. But yeah. I, I really, I really enjoy this series a lot. I didn't think I was going to because I just, I don't know, it just seemed very, um, it, it, did, it looked to me initially like just because of seeing things like All Might that it was going to be kind of, like a more of a American comic book type of show than not. I mean, I mean, some of these characters seem to have more of what I would expect of a Japanese hero. So you'd be surprised I mean, how many X Men references there are. Well, yeah, I mean, even just the whole uh, academy thing is kind of yeah similar. Well, like some of their powers are straight ripped out of X Men. It's pretty neat. <laughs> um, but it's just so, what no no go. I was I just think that what I like the best out of the show is that. They're, they're really good at doing parts where it's, you know, it can be kind of like an emotional scene, but yet it can still be funny and it doesn't yeah. feel awkward. I know sometimes, you know, it's like they're trying to be serious and they throw in a joke and it just feels yeah. super awkward. I don't, you know, like they're just try, trying to lighten the show up, but they do a bad job. But yeah. like the transition is just, you know, it just seems to work really well. So I just think it just has a lot to do with how it's written. You're right. I, I get that too. I, I don't know why, but, like, Deku and, like, Bakugo are big stereotypes. Like, we've seen these characters before, but for some reason, they're just written really well, and you do care about them. And it's genuine when they have emotions and stuff. I, um, I wanted, you, uh, you said before you are worried about characters. I wanted to mention that it does shift around a lot, uh, when there's fights, but uh, for the most part, it focuses on three or four characters. Uh, the girl that he saves, uh, the guy with the glasses, uh, Bakugo, and uh, Deku. So 
it's basically uh, like the standard Naruto grouping. Um, it'll show other students. Uh, my favorite is the invisible girl that is in every panel, but you only notice if you see her gloves. <laughs> um, some of the side students get some dialogue here and there, but um, they don't get really a lot of focus. But, yeah. Um, my only issue, and this is something that's going to continue in the manga for a while, Deku gets... Like, his le arms and legs get destroyed a lot. And it, even in the manga, it takes uh, till the mid-40s for him to learn how to control it. And I thought, okay, now that he can control it, they won't have to rely on that. And uh, now that I've finished all the chapters, um, I just found out that they're still kind of relying on that to keep him... And I understand they have to keep him, like, restricted. Because he's the strongest character by default, but it's just I don't like that as a as a way of doing it. And I, yeah. you'll see in some of the upcoming fights, like he can't control it, so he uses his fingers and it crushes his fingers. It, it's just weird. Uh, like that, that I don't care for. But the rest of the manga was so good that it made up for it. Um. I'm looking forward to this. I kind of think it's... I don't know if it's 13 or 24 episodes. If it's I 24, saw it 13. Yeah, if it's 13, I know where it's going to end. But If it's 24, it can go on to the uh, school festival arc. We'll, we'll see, though. Um, we're going to keep covering this for the rest of the season. Uh, Pat uh, will probably be back next week. <laughs> and he can uh, comment. He, he reads the manga, too, so... Oh, yeah, uh, they didn't show Frog Girl yet. Uh, she'll be in the next episode, I think. As I keep being told that she's one of the best characters. I don't get... Well, you know what? She's funny, and she's cute. And uh, there's this uh, extra chapter with her where uh, she's in middle school, and she makes uh, friends with a girl. One of the funny things about this world that they haven't shown in the uh, anime yet, uh, some people just have animal heads. Oh, actually, yeah, in the opening, there's, like, some bird guy or something. Yeah, he, uh, that's not his power, though. But, uh, like, just some people, for whatever reason, have, like, an animal head, and their power is based on what that animal is. So, uh, this little extra comic that they probably won't animate. Um, she's in middle school, and this girl with a snake head keeps staring at her. And then, uh, when she asks her to be friends, the girl with the snake head just breaks down crying. Because everyone was afraid of her. And they want to be her friend. <laughs> so I can see why people like her. She's really uh, she's really straightforward. And uh, she doesn't get a lot of screen time, though. That's my, like, one gripe. But she's a really neat character, yeah. Uh, she uh, She's actually in Deku's first big fight, though. So you'll get to see a lot of her there. That should be uh, next two or three episodes, hopefully. Okay, so next up, we'll get the Ace Attorney in a minute, Mark, don't worry. Uh, Re-Zero, episodes three and four. We finally completed a day, you guys. We got to a <laughs> save point. The problem... <laughs> okay, so we get the new fight with, um, is it Elise, I want to say? I, mean, like, I, I can't remember. The gut killer, <laughs> we'll call her. She's a horrifying monster. <laughs> Let's see. I forget the, the Elsa, actual Elsa. name that I saw. They, they said, like, the Bowl. Yeah, the, the, like... the Bowl Hunter, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Which is weird. Um, okay, so Puck is keeping her at bay with ice. He loses his power as night goes, but uh, Amelia can still use ice. They're doing pretty good, but. It's clear she has the upper hand. Uh, Reinhard uh, from episode two comes in and saves everyone's ass with the coolest attack I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, Crunchyroll posted a video. His attack was so powerful it turned the anime into sketches. <laughs> it was so neat. Um, every she runs away. She doesn't get killed, but. Uh, 
He slashes Subaru and runs. Everyone's thinking, oh, okay, we, we get it. Uh, he thought he had deflected the blow, but no, he's been gutted again. Thankfully, Amelia has healing powers, so he doesn't have to restart the day again. Unfortunately, Felt uh, is found out for stealing the insignia. Reinhardt was going to let her go, but when he found out what she stole, he had to uh, take her into custody. And Amelia takes uh, Subaru home with her to uh, take care of him while he's recovering. Episode 4, uh, we wake up at the Roswell Mansion. First to a Wally, who puts Subaru in an infinite hallway, which he breaks almost immediately. <laughs> I love that little bit. He's like, no, it's always the first door. <laughs> uh, and then to two twin maids, uh, who insult him. I don't like either of these characters, but <laughs> we're stuck with them because they're in the theme song. Uh, let's see. He... Uh, he meets uh, Lord Roswell, who is weird, and uh, we find out what the insignia is finally. Amelia is a candidate to be ruler of the country. And people apparently don't want her to be the uh, ruler. I don't know. Um, he decides he, uh, he gets one favor from Lord Roswell for saving Amelia, and uh, he decides to be a butler. We see him. I don't know how much time passes in this episode. It seems like it's one or two days. Uh, yeah, he I'm learns all sure. the duties. Yeah. Uh, then uh, he gets a date with Amelia, then, and uh, when he wakes up, time is reverted, which means somebody killed him in his sleep. Yeah. Cause at first, I was thinking, wait, so does his power work more than just by you know him getting killed? But then I was thinking, yeah, that's probably what happened was he got killed in his sleep since they were horrifying. already suspicious of him. Yeah. It's weird. I think it's good that he didn't tell anybody. You think he would have at least told Amelia about his ability, but this episode like freaked me out. Like when he woke <laughs> up and time reversed, I'm like, oh crap. It's interesting, only one of the maids was with the count. I don't know if he's a bad guy or not yet. I I mean I yeah I it's hard to sit, know exactly what's going on. I mean, I kind of got the feeling that he he kind of wanted to be. I mean, he seemed like he, he kind of has a whole plot for getting Amelia to, as like the the ruler and then kind of doing stuff from the shadows. So yeah, that seems. I'm not sure. Like they clearly they dressed him as an obvious villain, but so far the show's kind of been. Subverting that stuff? I don't know. So do you think the librarian seemed to say not she seemed to know he was getting killed. I don't know if she can because her library exists outside of time and space, do you think maybe she'll be the first one to know that that's his power? Uh yeah, I don't know, that's possible. I just I, I guess like I just went by fast that I, I didn't really catch everything about with yeah. the library but I, I, just, I knew it was like kind of connected to its own dimension but I didn't yeah. know exactly how it worked I guess we'll find out actually I think the episode goes up tomorrow we'll see <laughs> uh, I guess we'll find out soon I like these cliffhangers are like subtly horrifying because like if you woke up and found out oh crap somebody killed me while I was asleep even if you know you're going to live, that's still, like, mortifying. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's going to, now he has all that butler talent. I'm curious to what's going to happen. Because he's already learned all the hard stuff. So his job will be easier this time. Well, assuming he doesn't take Amelia's advice and where she had said that if he yeah. had a wish that he could just have been a permanent, permanent resident. Yes, <laughs> I think, uh, well, he still didn't have any money. I think that was the right thing to do. He didn't want to be, like... I don't think he thought they were going to kill him, but if he would have just asked to live there, they would have been more suspicious. But asking for a job, especially if you're new to the country, makes more sense. I don't know. That seems more like the Japanese thing to do. 
Um, we'll see, though. I'm interested to see where this is going. It's probably only 13 episodes. But if they spend Actually, like... it is listed as 25. Oh, is it 25? Oh, good. Then they can take their time. I think he'll get this one solved in one episode. I just, I still don't, I mean, I get what the, that whole, um, whatever you want to call it, the, uh, emblem thing, I can't remember exactly yeah. what it's referred to as, but, yeah. I, I get that, it, like, what it, what the whole purpose of it is, but I, it still seems kind of weird how, um, that Reinhardt reacted with, about Felt stealing it, I don't know. Well, I mean, if it's that important, I can see why he doesn't care that he stole it, he wants to know... Who wanted it stolen? I yeah, think. I guess that makes sense. He doesn't sense. seem like the guy who would just arrest the little girl. It just it seemed like he just suddenly got really serious when he was kind of more laid back. Mm-hmm. I think it's like, oh man, somebody's trying to screw with the king name. I better... I mean, ultimately, he is a knight. I'm sure he's just going to question her and let her go because she's one of the main characters. But we'll, we'll see. I think that's it for these two. Then finally, Ace Attorney, episodes one to four. So, the first two episodes are the Turnabout Sisters case. Three and four are. Oh, yeah, three episode and four one. as well? Episode one is, is case one, one, two, three, and four are all Turnabout Sisters. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Because it says the episode one is the first turnabout. That's my mistake. Uh, let's, see. let's see. Rookie defense attorney Phoenix Wright faces his first trial. He must defend his friend Larry Butts, who has been accused of the murder of his ex-girlfriend. Uh, Frank saw it. Is the witness. We know it's him. Phoenix saves the day. And then uh, the turnabout sisters... Uh, Mark, do you want to describe this case? You, you're, uh, you're more familiar with it than I am. What, just describe the case? Yeah, just uh, the basics. Uh, okay, so Mia, Phoenix's uh, mentor, uh, gets murdered. So if you thought it was going to be one of those series where it's like, oh, okay, those, these two are going to be palling around. It's like, no, not necessarily, because Mia, Mia gets killed. Uh, Phoenix walks in on finding her body and uh, her sister Maya is there and the scene's made up to look like Maya's the one who did it and uh, uh, Phoenix goes around trying to get another attorney to maybe take her case but uh, there's a lot of heavy influence going along that no defense attorney is going to take this case so he agrees to do it and he, st- and he basically finds out that there's this really powerful uh, media person that was like spying on her because she came up with some dirt on uh, his organization. And um, he killed her in order to uh, silence her and take this evidence away. But right as um, Phoenix hit this huge roadblock in the, uh, the, the trial, and they introduced Edgeworth for this trial too, and Phoenix is just clearly being outmatched by, by Edgeworth here. Um, Maya uses her uh, spirit channeling abilities and brings out Mia. So it's basically they copy pasted Mia's like Mia onto like Maya's body, but they changed like the proportions and everything. <laughs> if they really notice that much in this series. <laughs> um, so Mia's like she tells Phoenix like what he needs to do at the end. There, it's like you have what you have to win this case, and then he he proves this big contradiction. That proves that the uh, the mogul guy here, the mogul guy originally came to the trial because as soon as Phoenix started snooping around, he was ready to take the stand and say, oh, you know what? I actually saw you kill her. So he wanted to get Phoenix locked up. But he slipped up too much in his testimonies and stuff. So Phoenix finally had the piece he needed. Um, and right as the that little text was mistaken. Well, right as Edgeworth was trying to get another day out of investigating this to see if there could be more evidence uh, that could suddenly magically appear, because Edgeworth was being surrounded with all these forged evidence rumors for a while. Um, Mia actually, 
like kind of like she basically threatens uh, the mogul guy. His name is Red White. And it's like, you know, I might I might my body might be dead, but my soul's alive. And I still remember a list, long list of those names of people that you had information on. Perhaps I should uh, expose all that. And White's like, oh, my God, no. So he, he confesses to, to killing her. Okay. Yep. And uh, Maya's going to be working at the uh, at the law office being basically Nick's partner. Okay. So, um, I'll, I'll admit, I didn't really watch his, the animation turned me off a lot. And then I thought it was going to be like some unique cases and not direct adaptions of the game. So, uh, when I found that out, I kind of turned it off. Uh, how did you like it, Denmark? You're you're a huge fan. Yeah, um, I'm okay with like these adaptations of these cases. Um, there's some things I think they handle a little bit better, like Mia threatening uh, Red White with the exposure. You couldn't get a good picture of that in the uh, the games because they only have so many frames, yeah. like sprites to use. But she actually like flings a piece of paper. <laughs> She actually flings a piece of paper at White with like the names that she she remembered she, she had on him. So that was pretty interesting. Uh, what about uh, the freakouts when he breaks in? It? Are they uh, animated well? They're pretty. They, they pretty much look like animated versions of how it happens in the games. Oh, good. <laughs> Those are always so, the best part. Yep. Um, one of the things I have to just go wow to was. Um, I mean, Red White, he spoke, like, pretty awkwardly, I guess is the best word in the games. Mm -hmm. Like, he had his only, his, he, he, like, made up words, like, I think, absolutely or something like that. Instead, it looked like, like, he used that, but in the, the anime here, they really went crazy with the English. I'm sorry. <laughs> and even, like, quoting stuff. Like, you could tell he was well, quoting. Like, he oh, is Japanese. <laughs> takes place in california you know <laughs> he said he spent time in america i'm so i'm just so confused <laughs> he, he quoted obama by like saying saying like yes we can and stuff like that <laughs> i saw another anime where they did that they had it was supposed to be the president of the u.s and he's like yes we can it's it's like mr white can you prove this yes we can <laughs> it's like, oh my god <laughs> Just random, like the first thing he's when he sees Phoenix, like up to his office, he's like, "What's your name?" Like, what the hell? <laughs> like, you no. I mean, White's supposed to be this scumbag, and I think, oh, I think I was reading like comments of videos. It's like, what when they try to use like these English words? It's like they do it in a derogatory way. No, they're don't. trying to make it sound like he knows English. They're not trying to be derogatory, they just, uh, they don't know English. Ugh. It's just, it was just so cringeworthy. It's like I was just waiting for the next instance of where he's just gonna say something, like, awkward like that. I've heard worse, trust me. He's probably well, as bad. There's one set, there's an anime that's set in England, and the little girl talks in quote unquote English, but it's a Japanese lady, and it is so awful. Like, just paragraphs of English dialogue by this woman who cannot speak it. Trust me, Red might be fine. Um, the music's fantastic, though, for the series. They they do lift it from the games, but obviously not direct lifts. Yeah. So it's or orchestral? Um, I'd have to hear it again, but I want to say the knee-jerk reaction, yes. Okay. Um, I don't... Uh, man, you just when you hear... They only play it for, like, so much. And the references to the games are neat, where they have, like, the whole cross-examination where you get the quick split screen of, like, Phoenix above Edgeworth and stuff. Um, I am pretty hyped for the next episode, because it is going to be... The Steel Samurai. Uh, okay, yeah, I remember Steel that with the shop and the samurai stuff. Yeah, and that's going to have Wendy Old back, and I cannot wait to see how they're going to handle her. <laughs> she she even horrified Mark because she was edited heavily. 
she drove Edgeworth crazy. He just hates her so much, and she's a recurring character too throughout the series. <laughs> it's like I think in case two, it's like no, not her, anybody but her. <laughs> Where Allman collected Edgeworth is like no, like, so, no. <laughs> do you think you'd want a season two, which would obviously be the second one? I mean, sure. I mean, it's it's nice to see uh, Phoenix get a lot more love. And I mean, eventually, eventually, if they keep doing more and more seasons, you're going to run out of games and have to do some original stuff unless you go into the manga. <laughs> Which oh. manga's all new. Manga's new stuff. See, that's what I thought they'd adapt. Mm-hmm. But, eh. oh well. I think they're doing the games because they just want to hype Ace Attorney 6 a lot. I think they're doing the games because it was cheaper to adapt the games. Yeah, yeah. I mean, plus, I, I haven't seen the manga, so I can't remember, like, or really, rec- like, know if they had certain characters. Like, I don't know if Edgeworth's in most in the manga a lot, but he's, like, everywhere in first game, and you can't have an anime without Edgeworth. Well, if they do the games in order of release, then Edgeworth will get his own season, I assume. Mm. So that's something. That'd be the closest thing we have to investigations too in this country. <laughs> Probably. No, we won't get that season. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, did you watch uh, any of this at all? I, I watched the first one and then I just never got a chance to, to keep up with it. Yeah. I think I have a total of about, and this is including my uh, Tokusatsu stuff, about 28 shows this season, so. <laughs> a little hard to keep everything going. No, that's cool. That's why I tried to keep the focus on three or four shows last year, or the year before when we tried to do, like, every show of the season and everything went well, so... I think, I think for me, too, it's, it's just, since I haven't played the games, it's not as exciting. I, I could definitely see if I had played them, mm-hmm. just to see how they, they do everything in actual animation. So, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure... If I get around to playing them eventually, that I wouldn't mind going back and watching some of it. Most of them are on uh, iPhone and iPad now, so they're not too hard to track down. Okay. Mm. So I think that's it for this week. Uh, next week, I don't know what shows we're going to be doing. I found uh, a real fun one <laughs> called uh, Anne Happy, which is... Uh, about five idiots have the worst <laughs> luck. Um, it's, it's definitely, I mean, I watched the, the first episode of it, or actually, I think I watched the first two. I mean, it's definitely one of those cute slice of life shows, yeah. but it's, it's I just. It's basically Yuri Yuri if they weren't all lesbians. <laughs> um, it's okay. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do a whole thing on that, but uh, we'll see. Uh, Twin Star Exorcist is actually better than I thought. Yeah, I, I do like that one a lot. And basically, uh, Nero from Devil May Cry 4, which I think is neat. And, um, I, I don't know. Uh, we'll definitely be doing My Hero, uh, Kids Now here. We're going to wait another couple episodes on ReZero and just see where the story goes. And, uh... We'll probably wait on Ace Attorney again, just because... Uh, Might as well just wait till case 1-3 is over. Yeah. Do the whole case. Just talk about the whole thing. Okay, so uh, that'll do it for this week. Thanks for listening to Anime Recap. Um, we don't have a pre-recorded improv for this one, but uh, you can find... I don't know if, uh, we, don't know if we can, because we get co- slapped with copyright so much if we take a song... <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no. Uh, the end call is just me reading where you can find us. But no. <laughs> it changes every week on here, so um, you can find uh, us, all of us, at facebook.com slash robothousepodcast. You can find us on Twitter at KingRipCore. That's uh, where I post the episodes and stuff. Um, Mark is Analyst Duelist. Uh, I'm going to put his name on the Twitter. And uh, Steve is a Otaku Henshin on Facebook, uh, facebook.com, Otakuhenshin Online, and his website, otakuhenshin.com. Uh, 
you can find statues from the rest of these shows we talked about in a couple weeks, I assume. Uh, and that'll be it for this week. If you like our shows, please like and subscribe. I'm remembering to do that now. I'm a good boy. <laughs> See you next week.